Hi guys, this is Ashish from Edureka and welcome to this second part of MeanStack CRUD application tutorial. That is the ninth video of this Edureka's free Angular course for a beginner. Now, in the previous part, we already built or completed our backend codes. There we created a server using Node and Express and finally tested our APIs for all the CRUD operation using Postman utility. Now, in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to cover our front end part, that is the Angular part. And then finally, we'll be having our fully functional website or web application. So let's go ahead and get started with our development process. So I'll open my text editor. So this is the CRUD backend part, the folder that we have created in the previous part where we created the schema. And similarly, we created this entry.js file where the execution begins in your backend class. And we also created all the APIs with respect to different different CRUD operation that is get, post, put, and delete. All right, so let's start uh, with our front end application. Now let me give you an overview of what we are trying to do in our front end application. What we'll do, we'll have a component that will have a form where a user can enter or add a new item to the database. Second thing that we want, we want to show the list of items, the shopping items. And also we want the edit and delete functionalities over there using buttons. So that's what we want over there. So for that, let's go ahead and close all these tabs with respect to our backend codes. And we'll open the Angular project. This is the Angular project, guys, that we have generated. And we'll be working inside the app folder, as you know. So now what we want to do is we want to generate a component. So I'm going to open the terminal. And then we're going to go ahead with the ngcli command that is ngg component g for generate. And I'm going to name the component as shopping item. Now we are in the wrong list because we are in the parent directory. So we're going to go ahead inside the Angular project directory and then we're going to issue the command ngg component and then go ahead with shopping item. So this will generate the component for me. So as you can see, we have all the files being generated over here. And this is the folder regarding that shopping item component. Now in this component, we'll be having forms. We'll be having a list where all the shopping items will be displayed and we'll be having two buttons. One for editing that particular item, whatever that has been entered by the user and second one to delete an item from the list. And also what we need, we need a data service class where we will be putting all those data access logic so that whenever we make a call from our component for adding a new item, that particular method that is defined in our data service class will be invoked or will be executed. That will make the API call to our backend service. And finally, that particular item will be added to our database. So let's go ahead and create our service class. So we're going to go ahead with ngg service and name it as data because we'll be working around data access logic only. Now, apart from that, what I need is I need a model for my item. So I'm going to go ahead and create a file called as item.ts. All right. And here I'm going to go ahead with export class item. And then I'm going to put all those property with respect to my item that I have. So we have three properties. That is one is the name of the item. The second one is the quantity. And the third one is uh, whether the item has been bought or not. That is the Boolean one. Besides that, we also have one ID as a property that has been generated by our MongoDB. So whenever we are retrieving data, we can use that ID property in order to identify a particular object or an item. So let's go ahead and create all those property. So I'm going to go ahead with optional ID property because we won't be or a user won't be entering this particular field. And then we need item name, which will be of type string. Then we need item quantity, which will be of type number. Then we need item bot, which is a Boolean value. All right. Now let's get back to our component. Now here what we want, we want a form initially and we want a property to store the list of items that is there in our database. So before that, let me import the model item slash item. All right. So let's see whether uh, I think we have created item in the wrong folder. We will in the tree view. We're going to put it inside our app folder. Now it's working your item class and we have imported it successfully. Now what we need, we need to create a property named as shopping item list. 
So this will contain the list of the items. It will be of type item, basically an array, and we'll initialize it with an empty list as of now. Now, next thing that we need is we need method that will be called in order to fetch the list from our database. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say get items. All right. And this will this method will basically call your uh, method that is there in your data service class in order to fetch the list. So let's say to do later and let's head towards our service class. Now since we'll be working around form and HTTP module, so we need to import these two modules. So let's go back to our app.module file and here we need to import HTTP module from at the rate angular slash HTTP. Also we need to import forms module forms and then what we need to do is we need to put it inside our import area. So let's copy this and we have HTTP model over here and similarly we have forms model over here. All right, now let's get back to our data service class. Now here we need to import HTTP from our HTTP package in order to get access to all those HTTP methods. And besides that, we also need classes such as response and headers. So let's go ahead and import those. So we'll say HTTP and then we need response. Then we need headers from at the rate angular slash HTTP. Now we need to go ahead with dependency injection so as to create an instance of HTTP. So let's say private HTTP of type HTTP. All right. Now let's go ahead and create a method called as get shopping items. This will be used to fetch data from our backend. So we'll say return. So basically we'll be returning the list of that items. So we'll say return this dot HTTP dot get. And here we're gonna pass the URL to which the call will be made, the API route. So I'm gonna say HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash items. So in fact, let's do one thing. Uh, let's get back to our backend code. And if you check out the route.js file, you can see that we had this particular route for get method. So that is what we are trying to do over here. We are trying to make the call to this that particular API for retrieving the list of items. Now we need to map the response as JSON. So let's go ahead and do that. Map res res.json. Now here we are getting an error as property map does not exist because we haven't imported the reactive JS uh, operator. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say import rxjs slash add slash operator slash map. All right. Now, as you can see, the error has been dissolved. Now, this is the method that is there in your data service class. Then what we'll do, we'll be injecting this particular service to our component. And from there, we're gonna make call to this particular method for accessing the list of item or for retrieving the list of item. So for now, let's go ahead and create one more method over here for adding a new item to our list. So let's say we're gonna have a method called as add shopping item. And we're gonna receive a new item from our form. So let's put it over there. And here we need headers to send request of type headers. And then we need to append the content type. So let's say headers dot append. And here we're gonna have content type, which will be of type application slash JSON. Now let's go ahead and make the call, the API call. So we're gonna say this dot SCTP dot post. As you know, the post method is used to send a new data or insert a new data to your database. And then we're gonna go ahead with the URL. So we can basically copy this particular URL over here. Now the route for the post method is API slash item without an S. And then what we need to provide is we need to provide the item that we want to add. So that will be new item that will be receiving from our component, basically from the form where the user will be adding the item and then we need to append the header. So we'll say headers, type headers. All right, then whatever response that will be retrieving or getting from our backend, we need to map it as JSON. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say res, res.json. 
so that's it guys so we have two methods in our data service class as of now one is for retrieving the data and the other one is to add a new item to our database or to make the post api call to our backend so now let's get back to our component and here first we need to inject our service so let's do that so we'll say import data service from data dot service all right and then for dependency injection we need to pass that instance or for dependency injection you have to use the constructor so we're going to say private and then instance of data service class that will be used for accessing all the methods that we have defined in the data service class so we'll call it as data service type data service all right now let me put this method below the constructor so as to make it more organized now what we want over here is basically we want to store whatever list that we are getting of the items to our shopping item list property so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say this dot data service dot sorry for the typo let's get rid of this this dot data service then we'll be having uh, get shopping items okay now basically this will return me an observable you can think of observable as a container where your data is residing now in order to be an observer or in order to get the data from your observable you need to subscribe to that particular observable so we'll say dot subscribe all right now here what we want to do is basically we will be retrieving the data as a list and we want to store it in our shopping item list property so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say we are retrieving the data in items and what we want is basically we want this to be stored in our shopping item list equals to items and let's go ahead and do a console log as well so we'll say data from data service and we'll say this dot shopping item list all right now before we go ahead what we need to do is we need to run our backend code as well so let me open my uh, command prompt and also we have to run our or rerun our mongodb service so don't forget to do that else you will get an error so we're going to go ahead with program files then we're going to go ahead with mongodb then server 3.4 bin and here we'll get an executable as a mongodb.exe that you have to run in order to start your mongodb service and then again let's go ahead with another command prompt and here i'm going to go back to my backend code and spin my server so i'm going to say i'm going to tutorial shopping list crud backend and i'm going to use node mon all right so our server has been started at port 3000 and mongodb has been connected to port uh, 27017 now let's go ahead and run our angular application so we'll say ng serve now once we do that basically we should be able to get the entire shopping list that is there in our database and basically we'll be seeing that list in our console of the browser so we'll go back to our browser and open it in our inspect mode and then once it has been done let's go ahead with localhost 4200 and this is our application now the thing is we haven't nested our shopping item component to app component so let's go ahead and do that so we'll copy this and we'll go back to our app component we'll get rid of all these thing over here and you're gonna put our shopping item component tag over here so as to load this or nest this component in our app component now we are getting an error over here you can see that a null injector error no provider for data service that's because we forgot to provide our service to component class so for that we're gonna go ahead with our shopping component and here we're gonna say providers and here we're gonna pass the name of the service class which is data service now if i go ahead with control s you can see everything is fine now this method is not being executed as of now because you need to map it with some button or something like that or else what we can do since we want to retrieve the data whenever our component is being loaded into our dom for that what we can do is basically we can go ahead and make a call in this ng on init method which get executed whenever your component is being loaded into your dom so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say this dot get items 
Now once we do that, you can see that we are retrieving data from our backend. Now let's do one more thing. Now let's say we want to have the zeroth index and there we want to have the name of the item that is there. So if we do that, you can see that we are retrieving the item list from our database and basically we are referring to the first item that is there in the list and the, basically the name of that particular item in the list. So that is egg. So we are able to retrieve the data guys from our backend. So for now, we don't need it. Next thing that we want is we want to show the list. So let's get back to our item component template and here we're going to go ahead with an S2 tag and we'll say shopping list. All right. And here what we want is we're going to go ahead with a dev tag and inside that we will have one more dev tag for displaying each item in, as a list. Now here I'm going to use ng4. ng4 is a directive that basically iterates over the list whatever list that you have provided and based on that it will add those element to your DOM. So I'm going to say ng4 and let item of the list that we have in our component the property that is shopping item list and then for displaying the name of that particular item we're going to go ahead with interpolation and we, we're going to say item dot item name all right so let's go ahead and have a look at the output so you can see that we are having a list as of now we haven't added any bootstrap class so it's not looking that good so that will be doing later on so for now we are able to display the list that has been retrieved from our database all right now what we want is basically we want in each row of the list we want four things first we want the name of the item then we want the quantity of that item then we want two buttons one for editing that item any details that a person want to edit and the second thing that we want is a delete button and besides that we also need one checkbox so whenever the person has bought that item from the shop in that case you can go ahead and check that particular checkbox with respect to the item and the same data should be reflected in our database as well. So all those things we have to do. So now let's go ahead and add a bootstrap class called as row. Now the thing is that we haven't added bootstrap. So let's go ahead and add bootstrap. So for that, we're going to go ahead with the command npm install bootstrap. It's saying no such file as package.json. All right, so let me go back to my project folder again, and then we're gonna go ahead with the command npm install bootstrap. All right, so our bootstrap has been added. So now in order to incorporate the style sheet with respect to bootstrap in your bundles, what you have to do, you have to mention it in your Angular CLI property or JSON file. So here we're gonna go ahead with the style section and there you have to add all the style sheet that you want to get bundled along with your Angular application. Now this bootstrap has been added to our node modules folder. So inside that, if you can see, we will be having one bootstrap folder. If you go inside that, then inside this, inside CSS, this is the file that we want to add, or this is the style sheet. So we're gonna go ahead with copy project path. Then we'll go back to our configuration file. That is Angular CLI configuration file. And here we're going to provide that particular path. Now, whatever path that you are providing over here, that will be referred with respect to source folder as a root directory. So what I'm trying to say is, let me collapse this. So this is the source directory, which will be used as a reference from which whatever path that you have to mention, you have to do that with respect to this reference. So what we can do is basically now we are inside source folder. So we're going to go one step back. All right. So as to go inside the node modules folder, we're going to go it with node modules. And then we have bootstrap. And after that we have dist, then we have CSS, then we have bootstrap.main.css. So this is the flow guys. Now let me read on the server. So I'm going to go ahead with ng serve so that it can bundle the new style sheet for the bootstrap in the application that we have added. I'm going to go ahead with ng serve again. Now we are getting an error as uh, it's failed because we have done some error. So basically we forgot it to put inside the double quotes. So let's go ahead and do that. Now everything is fine. Now if I go ahead and do ng serve. 
all right so now if I go back to my browser you can see that there has been some difference and also what you can do you can check whether the bootstrap has been added so in your head section inside the style you can see the bootstrap has been added to your bundles all right now the next thing that we want to do is we want to add all those buttons and all those item quantity in a same row while displaying the list so we're gonna go ahead and do that so we'll say one more div tag over here and here we want to put at our name all right and we're gonna give it as call MD iPhone 3 then we need one for our quantity so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say item quantity over here and let's make it two all right so we have got three to five and we are remaining with seven now we need two buttons so again we're gonna go ahead with call hyphen MD hyphen three and here we're gonna go ahead with a button that will be the edit button and after that we're gonna have a button for deletion and here we're gonna say delete all right now we also need a checkbox so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say def all right call MD hyphen one with an input which will be of type checkbox and we do not require value as of now now let's see the button has been added so this is the button now let's go ahead and add bootstrap so we'll start with the button so we'll say class button button uh, danger let's go ahead and add bootstrap to our edit as well this will be let's say primary let's make it blue We should go ahead with call MD instead of mid. Now you can see that we are getting the list. Now let's go ahead and add few bricks. One more. Yeah, so we are getting the list now. Now what we need is we need a form for the user to add new items. So let's go ahead and build that as well. So you want to go ahead with a form. And here we want two fields that a user should input the first one will be for the name of item the second one will be for the quantity all right so let's go ahead with an s2 tag over here or let's put it inside the form uh, we'll say uh, add item all right then we want our controls that is the input fields so we'll say dev class and let's add the css class as well which will be form group now inside that we'll be having a label and then we'll be having an input right so let's go ahead with the label so the label will be name and then we'll be having an input field the type will be text uh, I'll be talking about this name attribute later on and let's go ahead and add one more CSS class as form control now let me copy this we want one more field like this for our quantity so we'll add quantity over here so we'll say quantity and this will be of type number all right once we are done with this we want a button so let's go ahead with a button of type submit here we'll say add item now let's add a CSS class or uh, we'll say as button button primary or let's make it as success because the person is adding a new item all right so now as you can see we are having the form for adding a new item which is fully functional now what we want to do is we want to have the access of all the values that a person is entering in the form for that we need to create a template reference variable so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna go ahead with hashtag frm and then we're gonna use a directive called as ng form so basically this will instantiate this frm template reference variable with respect to our form objects so that's what we are using over here and also what we want is whenever the person is clicking on a button at that time we need to access those value basically we will be capturing these values in a method and and using that method what we can do is we can pass those values for our data service class where we have our http post method that will again make a call to our backend API for adding that particular data to our database. So that's the flow, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and catch a 
an event called as ng submit and let's map it with a method let's call it as add item all right and inside that we're going to pass this form object so as to access all the values that has been entered by the user now in order to get access of all these values one more directive that you have to use in your controls that is called as ng model so basically this will add a model to your form so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna say ng model again here also ng model and then whenever you are using ng model you need to provide some value to your name attribute because this will be used as a key for your entire form data so if I go ahead and add let's say item name and then we have item quantity all right now let's get back to our component and let's close down this bootstrap we don't need this we don't need route.js we do not require app.module or neither do we require item.ts all right now let's get back to our component and here let's go ahead and create a method called as add item that will have a form object and then let's go ahead and do a console log dot form dot value all right so now let's go ahead and add a new item let's say i want a knife and that too i require two now if I click on this add button, you can see we are able to retrieve the values that has been entered by me. And if you notice, this name attribute that we have defined in the control field, that was item name and item quantity, those are used as key by your ng model directive. And whatever value that you are entering in those controls is being assigned to that particular key. So that's how it works out. That's why you have to define the name attribute whenever you're working around template driven forms or whenever you're using ng model in your forms all right so we have done our add item part now let's go back to our component now what we need to do is we need to pass this form object to our data service class that will again pass it or make a call to our backend so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say let new item all right which will be of type item now we're gonna say item name and that will be form dot value dot item name again I'm gonna make use of the key that we have defined in our name attribute in our form object so that's why we are going ahead with form dot value dot item name next field that we want is item quantity so we're gonna have it as form dot value dot item quantity and the reason that I'm creating a new item object because remember I told you that we added the require field in our schema so let's go ahead and check that let's have a recap now here we have added required uh, set to true in all these three fields so our database will accept an object only when we have set values with respect to all these three fields in our item object so that's the only case when our MongoDB database will accept an item object. So that's why what we are trying to do is basically we are getting two input from our user for the name and the quantity. And it is obvious that the item bought field will be set to false because the person hasn't bought that item yet. So that's why we're going to go ahead with a new item over here of type item. So let's say item bought and we'll set it as false. All right, now let's make use of our uh, post method in our data service class. So we'll say this dot data service dot add shopping items. And here we're going to pass that particular item that has been entered by the user. Now that will send us an observable, as you know. So we need to subscribe it. So we're going to go ahead with subscribe and let's have an item. All right, now what we can do, we can console log it basically we will be receiving a message as item has been added successfully so let's go ahead and do that so we'll say item and also what we need to do is we need to refresh our list so basically we need to call our get items method again so let's say this dot get items so whenever we are adding a new item we want our shopping item list array to be updated as well therefore we are calling this get item method again that will again make a call to our backend and update the shopping item list as per your database now let's see whether it works or not so again we're going to say knife and quantity 2 now let's say add item and you can see that a new item is being added to our list so far we have added two functionalities that is for adding the 
one item and the second one is for retrieving the items. Now what we want is we want a functionality for updating the item and then we also need a functionality for deleting one item. So let's go ahead and implement the delete one. That is easy. So let's get back to our data service class and here we're gonna have a method called as delete shopping item. All right. Now basically we'll be passing the ID of that particular item which we want to delete. So we're gonna go ahead with ID. All right then let's go ahead with return this dot http dot delete and here I'm gonna pass the URL for the delete route. So here is it. And also if you remember what we were doing we were passing the ID of that object in the URL itself. So let's go ahead and append that. So you're gonna say plus ID and then whatever response that we'll be receiving from our backend we need to map it as well. So you're gonna go ahead with map operator and here we're gonna say res res.json. All right. So our delete method or HTTP delete method has been done in our service class. Now let's go back to our component and here we want a delete method as well. So let's create that. So we'll say delete item. Okay. Now we'll be passing ID from our template. So let's go ahead with ID and here what we're going to do. We're going to write all the logic so as to make the call to our data service class. For now let's get back to our template and here we had that button for delete. Now here we're going to add that method. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have a method called as delete item and here we're going to capture a click event and map it to the method called as delete item and here I'm going to pass the ID of that particular item. All right. Which we want to delete. Now let's go ahead and make the call to our data service method for delete. So we're going to say this dot data service. All right dot delete shopping item and here we're going to pass the ID that we are getting from the list that we are displaying right and then we're going to get back some response. Now the thing is we also want this change to be reflected on our shopping item list array. So whatever item that we are deleting from our database we want that item to be removed from our shopping item list as well. So either what we can do we can refresh the entire list or else we can go ahead and do that in our front end as well. So let's go ahead and do that in our front end application only. So we're going to say subscribe then we're going to get some data from our back end or result. All right. Now using that data if you remember whenever we made the call to our postman at that time we were getting the response as some object something like this where you have n equals to 1 and then you had something like OK status that was set to 1. Now this n reflected the number of item that was being deleted at that time. So therefore we can go ahead and make use of that so as to make sure that that item has been removed from our database or not. So let's say we're gonna say if data dot n equals to equals to 1 that is the item has been deleted. What we want to do we want to iterate to our list. So we'll say where i equals to 0 then i less than shopping item list dot length then we'll have i plus plus. Now here if we got a match I'm sorry I forgot that this keyword here when we got a match with that of the item that we want to delete then we're going to go ahead and remove that item from our shopping item list array. So we're going to say id equals to equals to this dot shopping item list index i dot id. All right. Now if that happens what we want is we want this dot shopping item list dot splice. This is the method that you want to use so as to remove one item from the array and here you have to pass the index and the number of deletion that you're going to perform that is one. All right. Now let's do one more thing. Let's console log these data so that you can understand what I was trying to say. Now if I do a delete over here, so we are getting one error that is the path has not been found. So let's go back to our service. All right, so we forgot the trailing slash because that's why the route was not being matched. So let's go ahead and check that again. You can get rid of this uh, particular orientation problem that's happening because we are using column MD. All right, so that depends on the screen size. So you can go ahead and put several CSS classes uh, with respect to different different screen size. For example, SM, etc, etc. So let's go ahead with delete command again. 
And now you can see this is what the JSON response that we are getting from our backend that is n set to one and okay status set to one. So this n signifies the number of item that has been deleted, whereas uh, this okay signifies that whether the deletion operation was completed or not. So that's what we are using in our front end application. So if you go back to our components, so what we are trying to do is basically if we are getting data as data dot n equal to equal to one, that's when one of the item has been deleted, then we are iterating over our array, the shopping item list. Then we are checking if there's a match with the ID that we want to delete of that particular item with respect to the shopping item list. And then we are splicing that particular item out of the list. So that's what we are trying to do over here. So our delete method has been done. Now the next thing that we have to do is about update. So whenever we click on this edit button, what we want basically is we want a form to be generated over here in that a person can update the item. And also what we want, we want whenever a person click on this checkbox that should be reflected in our database. And even if you reload the application, the same status should be maintained and reflected in our front end. So that's the whole cool guys. So let's go back to our HTML and here what we need is we need one more form. So let's copy this and let's add it over here. And here we're going to have a form for edit item. So you're going to say edit item. All right. And then uh, this will have button as let's say save. All right, so let's see. Uh, we are getting some error because we are having the same template reference variable. So let's make it as edit form and let's copy this and put it inside our function as well. All right, and let's make it as edit item method. Now let's go back. We are having two forms, one for adding item, one for editing item. Now, whenever a person click on that edit button, we want those values to be in our edit item form so that the person can refer to those values and make the appropriate changes. So let's go ahead to our edit button. And here what we can do is basically we can go ahead with a method called as show edit form. All right. And we're going to map it with a click event. So let's say click equals to show edit form. And here we're going to pass that item that we want to edit. So we'll say item. All right. Now let's go ahead and create this method in our component. So we're going to create a method called as show or let's copy this show edit form that will give us an item that we want to edit. And here we're going to create a property called a selected item for the item that has been selected by the user for editing. So we'll say selected item that will be of type item. Now here we're going to say this dot selected item equals to item. And one more thing, uh, the reason that I have chosen such a name called as show edit form. The reason is quite simple. The thing is that I don't want both the forms to be uh, displayed at the same time. The edit form should only be displayed when the person has clicked on edit button. And since I guess I have made some typo that is edit form and now everything is fine. And now we are getting some error unexpected closing tag. So that is because we have deleted the quotes. All right. So now everything is fine. Now what we want to do is we need to add an ng if a directive so that only one form is being displayed at a time. So for that, what we can do, we can go ahead and create a flag called as toggle form, which will be a Boolean and let's set it to false in the first place. Now here I'm going to go ahead and say NJF. The expression will be toggle form. All right. This is the property to which it will be referring. Now this NJF directive, what it does is basically it adds or removes a certain element from your DOM based on certain condition. The condition that we have chosen over here is toggle form. Now, if you go back to our component, so this is a Boolean value, which is set to false. So initially that particular form that is the I atom form will not be displayed. So if I save it now, uh, you won't be able to see that I atom form. So we want that form to be displayed initially. So let's go ahead and reverse it and let's add the same thing to our edit form. So we're going to go ahead and add this to our edit form and we don't want it to be displayed in the first place. So now you can see you are getting 
only the add item form whenever the person click on this edit button then only I should be able to see this edit form over here so let's go ahead and to our uh, show edit form method and here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say toggle form and let's reverse it this dot toggle form all right now if I click on edit you can see we are getting the edit form but if I click on edit button again then again we are getting the add form and also when a person has clicked on that edit button it should be disabled that is like uh, something logical right so we can go ahead and make use of disable property so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna say disabled all right and it will be disabled once your toggle form has been set to true right so we'll say toggle form that is at the time when you we are able to see our edit form so now if I click on this button you can see that button is getting disabled and you are able to see your edit form now what we want is basically we want whenever a person click on this edit form with respect to any item we want those values to be displayed in our edit item form so for that what we can do is we'll go to our edit form and then we'll make use of this ng model property and basically we'll be using property binding and we'll be initializing the value with the selected item property that we have created right so whatever item that we are selecting over here those values are or the values with respect to that item or that item object is being stored in our selected item property that we have created so if you see over here and similarly if you check out this show edit form button which gets called once the person has clicked on that edit button that particular property has been assigned with the value of that item on which the click was happened so let's go ahead and use that so we'll say selected item a dot item name and similarly we're gonna have the same for our quantity this time we're gonna go ahead with quantity now if I click on any of these edit button you can see we are able to get the value of that particular item on which we have clicked edit button all right now next thing is that we want to update these values so for that we need to go back to our data service class and write the HTTP put method over here or write the codes for HTTP put method so we're gonna say update shopping item okay so we'll be retrieving a new item uh, basically a new item object containing the new values and this is what we have to send over there and then we want to send some response as well so we're gonna say let headers basically we can copy this stuff from here it will be same all right then we want to say return this dot http dot put again we're gonna make use of that ID in our URL so that the correct item that we want to update can be identified and finally updated so we're gonna say again the same URL that we had over here along with the ID of that item so we'll say new item dot underscore ID all right and then we're gonna say the new item as well so let's go ahead with the new item and then we're gonna pass the headers now whatever response that we'll be retrieving we're gonna go ahead and map that to JSON and there's a typo that I have written as TPP so you have to make it as HTTP all right so now let's go ahead with dot map and that will be res res dot JSON so that's it guys now our update shopping item HTTP method has been done in our service class now let's get back to our component now here we're gonna create a method called as edit form let's go back to our template and this is the method that we'll be using so we'll say edit form which will give us to a form object that is a new value of the item that has been entered by user so let's say let new item of type item and we'll say item name is equal to form dot value dot item name then we need item quantity that will be form dot value dot item quantity and then at last we need item bot so we'll say item bot and that will be because the person is not entering the item bot field from the form so we're gonna make use of that selected item property so we're gonna say this dot selected item dot 
item bot and similarly we need ID as well so let's go ahead and use that so we'll say ID is equal to this dot selected item dot ID now let's push this new auto item to our HTTP put method in our data service class so we're gonna say this dot data service dot update shopping item and here we're gonna pass this new item and that will be returning us some observable so let's go ahead and subscribe that particular observable and whatever result that will be getting basically we'll be getting the original value or the original item that we wanted to update so we'll say console log original item to be updated with old values and we'll say result all right and then we also want to refresh our shopping item list property the array that we have with the new values or the updated values so let's go ahead and say this dot get items that's it and now here is some typo so let's uh, rectify that so now everything is fine now let's go ahead and check that whether it is working or not so if I go to uh, bread and I want to make it as let's say rum and now if I click on save the same thing is being reflected on my shopping list now once I click on save method this particular form should be replaced with that of add item because my edit operation has been completed so let's go ahead and fix that so I'll say this dot toggle form and I'll reverse it this dot toggle form all right so let's see whether it work or not so we're gonna say this time beer and let's save it and you can see we are getting the add item form over here now also what we can do is basically now a person can ignore one of the field and then press this add item button in that case we'll get an error because we have made all these field required in our backend code so for that what we can do is we can go back to our HTML form and use a directive called as required and again here also we're gonna go ahead with required now once a person does that so we're gonna say until a person has entered the value in these two fields the button will be disabled so we're gonna again make use of this disabled property and we'll say form dot invalid all right so initially this button has been disabled now once you enter some values for example let's say I want butter and I want two water now you can see the button has been enabled now you can click it all right similarly our delete functionality is also working our edit functionality is also working for example let's make it a six pack now go ahead with six now it has been updated uh, we can go ahead and basically do one more thing result dot item quantity all right now let's edit that particular item again so now let's make it 12 now if I click on save so the item that I'm getting over here it's the old value to which I made the update one more thing that is left over here is this checkbox so we need to go ahead and add a function for this checkbox as well so let's go back to our HTML form and here we are getting the value as checkbox right now for that what we want is basically we will be calling the same method that is the update shopping item in our data service and here basically we will be passing an updated item part value all right so let's go ahead with the property called as checked and we're going to use a property binding because whatever value that we are having in our item bot key with respect to the particular item we want that value to be reflected over here so we're going to say item dot item bot and next thing that we want is we want a click method so whenever a person click it we want those updation to be reflected in our database so now again we're gonna map it to a method called as update item uh, let's say checkbox all right and then we're gonna pass this item now let's get back to our shopping item list and here we're gonna create that method so we're gonna say update item checkbox and let's go back to our component and here I'm gonna say update item checkbox it will provide me that item and now what I want is basically 
uh, whenever the person has clicked it that it means that whatever the original value of that item pot was it was being uh, reversed so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna say item dot item pot is equal to reverse of item dot item pot all right then we want to send this item back to our database that is the updated item so we're gonna again copy this same thing that we have done over here and we're gonna make the call to our uh, service class HTTP put method and here we're gonna pass this item all right now let's say original checkbox value and here we can make it as item pot all right now let's see whether it works or not when I check the egg you can see the original value was false now if I click it again I should get the again the next original value as true so if I do that you can see the next value is coming as true or what I can do I can just reload it and I can see whether the same thing is being reflected on my browser or not and this is being reflected same thing is happening over here if I reload it again we are getting the check over there right so our checkbox is working as well so finally our code has been completed we have uh, implemented all the CRUD operation in our Angular part. We have used the HTTP uh, methods or HTTP module in our service class. And also we have added two forms for our add item functionality and edit item functionality. So this is the entire main stack app guys. So let me give you a quick walkthrough to course that we have done so far. So what we have done, we have uh, four HTTP methods in our service class, get shopping item, add shopping item, delete shopping item, and update shopping item with respect to each CRUD operation. And then we had this component, the shopping component that you are seeing over here. In the HTML part, we had two forms, one for editing item, one for adding item. And then we had a list uh, displaying each item, their quantity, two buttons, that is edit, delete, and a checkbox. All right. And in the previous part, we have created all our backend codes and we have made all those CRUD APIs that we are making call from our front end. And finally, we are able to make our web application fully functional. So that's the entire code, guys. And now in the next video of the series, we're going to go ahead and create an Angular Firebase application. So there, instead of putting everything on our Node and Express, we'll be using services from Firebase for authentication, for storing data or images or whatever we want. So I'll show you how to use that. For that, we'll be using a package called as Angular Fire 2. So everything will be explained over there. So I hope this mean stack video was helpful for you and you got an idea of how to create a full stack application using MongoDB, Express, Node, and Angular. So all right, guys. So see you in the next video. Till then, have fun. Bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.